Well, good morning, family. Hope that you are doing well today and that you are praising God for things being such as they are. We have our health and we have our lives and we have our loved ones. Uh, and most of us, we, we have food, we've got shelter, and we've got every reason to praise God and to thank him for uh, his wonderful blessings. Today, I'd like to share some encouragement with you from the book of Philippians. And the chapter is four. And we'll take a quick look at verse 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. I want to give you just a moment to get your Bibles and to get there. Uh, but uh, again, you know, with things being uh, as they are, and we're constantly hearing new things from the news and developments of what's going on with COVID-19, not just um here in our own communities, but uh, in our country and in countries around the world. And there are just many things that are going on that are just so unprecedented. And And the reason that uh, I want to be able to come and share with you on a daily basis is to just keep us encouraged, to just remind us um, that there is a God who is sovereign in the universe, who created all things, who created us, um, and that these uh, though they may be the first time that we're experiencing them, are not new things. Uh, and as we go, I want to, you know, stop talking so much about the situation. I think that we all know what it is and um, the things that we're having to endure and how different life is right now. But put more and more of the focus on God and his goodness and our relationship with him. So Philippians chapter 4 Verse 6, the Bible here says that we are to be anxious for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, to let our requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all comprehension or understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Lord, add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his divinely inspired word. Hi, Michelle. Um, what, a, what a powerful scripture that is. Uh, and I, I think when, when Paul says, be anxious for nothing, recall that he is writing to the church at Philippi, and they are under duress. Uh, there are those who are enemies that are trying to affect and afflict them, and they're dealing with that, and um, that they're getting very, very anxious about it. They're experiencing anxiety, and I know that many of us experience anxiety um, in these uncertain times. Um, will I be able to get the products that I need in order to live day to day? Will my job put me on furlough? Will I get laid off? Will we have income? How are we going to take care of these babies and our other responsibilities? And, you know, we have more questions than answers right now. And that brings forth anxiety. It's a natural human response to things that are unknown and things that we cannot control. But I, I, I want us as Christians to be thoughtful about that, because there are some who would say that anxiety betrays a lack of trust in God's care. I don't know if I would go that far uh, because we are human, because we are wrapped in this flesh, because we, we, we like to know where our next meal is coming from. We like to know that no one's going to come and try to foreclose on our house or or take our cars away or, or that our health would somehow uh, be affected and uh, leave us. Uh, there are any number of things that we don't have control over uh, that we are constantly trying to gain control over. Uh, and so when we have these uncertain times, uh, then it may be natural to experience some anxiety. But then right behind that, I would encourage us to remember our faith and to rely on the God who made us, to rely on the God who protects us, to rely on the God who says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, it's important that um, we not allow anxiety, worry, caring, concern to overtake us uh, because we can become so focused on those types of things that it takes us right out of our 
steady walk with the Lord, uh, where we leave him and try to fix things on our own. And oftentimes we we make them worse or or we may find that despite our best efforts, there's nothing that we can actually do to affect that. Uh, when if we would just leave things with God, uh, we would find that they would work out just fine. And so the scripture tells us that we are to be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to make our requests known to God. And, and so Paul's solution to the church is pray, pray. I mean, that should be second nature to us. It should be something that we would do automatically is just pray to our God and tell him about our concerns. And it's not as if he does not know what our concerns are. Uh, it, it's not as if he didn't know that they would come before they ever arrived, before we certainly ever knew. Uh, nevertheless, he desires that we be in communication with him because he is God. He is sovereign. He is the creator of the universe. But he's our father and he's concerned for us and about us. And, and so he desires that we bring those cares to him. And so uh, our, our first response ought to be to pray. We should just pray to God uh, early often and continuously, for the Bible tells us that we are to pray without ceasing. Uh, So that's very, very important. But in our prayers, it's okay for us to be direct about the things that we want. Um, When he talks about praying uh, in in, in a way that involves supplications, uh, that's a specific request. Uh, That means that there may be times where our normal prayer life of just thanking God and praising God and acknowledging him as the creator of the universe and all those kinds of things uh, are are still uh, what you want to have as part of your daily prayer life. But then there are times when you have acute situations where you can say, God, I'm, I'm in trouble. God, I'm been laid off of my job and uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to take care of my family. And so if you've got needs that are specific to the moment, uh, then don't be afraid to approach God with those specifics, right? This is what the scripture is telling us. This is about, you know, don't be anxious, but pray. And pray in a way that involves your specific requests if that's the situation that you're in. But he comes right behind that. And he says, with thanksgiving, which means that we should not be unaware of how God has been there for us throughout our lives. Uh, I know that all of us can look back on situations where we were in trouble or we were in jeopardy or there were situations that we were dealing with that were beyond our control um, and we just wondered how we were going to make it. Uh, Now, I don't know what those specific situations are in your life. I could tell you what they were in my life. Uh, But the bottom line is, is I believe that all of us can look back. All of us can travel down memory lane and remember what those times were And look at the present and realize that we're not in those times anymore. Why? Because God has brought us through those. There's nothing that we have ever undergone. There's nothing that we have ever had to put up with or anything that we were ever anxious about or concerned about that God has not brought us through. Um, And I feel confident in saying that because I believe that the things that you can't get over, under, around or through will be the thing that kills you. Now, of course, that's not the end for the Christian, but those things in life can take us out physically. Yet here we are fellowshipping with one another, talking about our God. In retrospect, thinking about the things that happen. So so God can. And so so we must include Thanksgiving in all of our prayers, acknowledging, God, you've done this before. I've seen you moving in my life. I've seen you moving in the lives of my friends and my family and my my, my church family. And, and I know that uh, what I should do is just bring these things to you and leave these things with you. And I just want to thank you for that. And we should also, in our prayers, continue to thank him for what he's done with other people. Um, you know, there are those who are far less fortunate than us. I don't care how bad our situation is. There's somebody who's got it worse. Uh, so, so we can be thankful that it is not as bad as it might otherwise be as well when we're talking to our God about what our particular needs are. He then goes on in verse seven and says that the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Um, I think that's really important. 
And, I, and I, I'm hoping that this will be an encouragement to us as well. Again, as we're dealing with our anxieties and our cares and our concerns that we're told not to be anxious. We're told to go to God in prayer. We're told to be specific in our prayer and we're told to thank him for the things that he has already done. But here's the here's 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 the result. And I almost called it a payoff and I don't want to do that. Um, but here's the payoff. <laughs> uh, uh, Paul tells us that the peace of God. The peace of God that passes all understanding will provide something for us. Now, I, 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 I wish I had time, and I, I try to keep these short, to tell you about the time that I experienced the peace that passes all understanding. Um, it's a literal situation that I felt personally attacked and under siege and was ready to go to my own resources to resolve this issue and was encouraged by some brothers that I love and care about very dearly who said, no, 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 we're going to pray. And we prayed. And during this prayer, I thought and thought and see, I appear to be telling you this story anyway. Um, I, I thought about, well, as soon as we're done praying, I'm, I'm, I'm up, I'm out of here and I'm going to do this. And uh, uh, but the longer we prayed, uh, the more I began to think about Jesus. Honestly, the more I began to think about Jesus. And I thought, you know, Jesus left glory. He left the perfection and the, the, the paradise of heaven to come to this earth and to put on flesh, which has to be, you know, for a spiritual, holy, perfect being has to be an, an amazing come down. <laughs> but he did that. And he walked the dust and dirt of this earth. And he had to deal with people uh, saying things to him and being disrespectful to him and calling him all these kinds of things, even while he was there trying to feed people and heal people and teach people uh, and just put up with all of that. Uh, and of course, they, they ultimately wanted to take his life. And, 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 and I thought that at no time, at no time did he quit because he could have. And I think a lot of us would have. I mean, we get our feelings hurt very, very easily. Um, and we decide that we're out. In fact, I had just decided uh, in that situation, I'm out. I'm done. Um, but Jesus never did that. And, and praise God that he never did that, because had he done that, we would not have been able to experience salvation. And then I thought, well, if Jesus hung in there for me, then I should hang in there because of him, in service to him, in service to others. I should model that behavior. I should utilize Jesus as my example. Um, and so by the time that that prayer came to a close with an amen, my attitude had completely shifted. And the hurt feelings that I had and the problems that I had and the intentions of my heart, all gone. I mean, completely, completely gone. And, 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 and I just had a completely new mindset where all of a sudden my feelings weren't hurt anymore. And even the situation and the individuals that were involved, no problem. Spoke to them like brothers, hugged them, shook their hands, all that stuff. They never knew that I knew. Because, family, I experienced the peace that passes all understanding. And I, I can only tell you the story. I can't tell you what it feels like. But just to have this weight just lifted off your shoulders, just to have concerns that were on your mind, just be gone, just not present just disappeared it was an amazing, amazing experience. And, and so this resonates with me that when Paul tells the church and the peace that passes all understanding, I know what that feels like because I've experienced it. And maybe you have to in your life. I hope that you have. And if you haven't, I hope that one day you do, um, because that really helped my faith. And it gives me uh, an attitude where I, I'm just a lot of things that bother a lot of people just don't bother me anymore um, because I do leave it with God. And this peace that passes all understanding, the Bible tells us, uh, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ. And to me, what that means is that when we do all that we can to put aside our anxieties, when we have the spiritual discipline to just go into prayer, when we just talk to God and, and let God know, here's what I'm going through. Here's what I'm feeling. Here's what I need. Here's what I'm asking you to do for me. If you find it within your will. But I thank you for the things you already have done. And if the answer is no for this, I'm going to believe and trust and follow you anyhow. 
He says he'll give you the peace. Now, you're only going to be able to get the peace if you let go, <laughs> right? You've heard that expression, let go and let God. Well, that's what that means. Once you give it to him, let him handle it. Let him have it. You, you can't continue to try to carry it around because that defeats the purpose. And then you didn't really give it to him anyway. It's like when people say, God is my co-pilot. Well, you're in the wrong seat, right? You, you, you should be in the passenger section and let him operate the plane. So with this peace comes protection. He will guard your hearts and guard your minds. Once you let it go, once you let him have it, once you receive that peace, you just let God do what he does. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't do anything. That You should just sit at home in your living room and wait for the publisher's clearinghouse to come and deliver a check to you. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, there are things that God has given us the ability to do. And if you're in a close relationship with him, um, your spirit of discernment is going to guide and direct you to the things that he is telling you to do. Uh, but the point of the matter is, is that you are going to relieve yourself of the anxiety, of the worry and of the concern that you are going to embrace the peace. And when you do that, then you're not going to be blown off course. You're not going to be taken out of your relationship with God. You're not going to sacrifice your Christianity and all that you believe in because of the coronavirus, because you're getting laid off, because a loved one has gotten sick. Because we who are Christians understand that this life <laughs> is a vapor. It is eternity to which we are trying to make it. It is the inheritance that we are trying to receive. It is the face of God that we are trying to see. And whatever happens in this life, we should position ourselves for that life. So my encouragement to you today, family... And so don't worry. Be happy to borrow uh, a famous song from the 80s. We just talked yesterday in the book of James how we are to count it all joy when we enter into these diverse trials. That's a tough thing to do and it takes practice and it takes work, but that's what we are to do. And when we do find ourselves being anxious, let's pray. Let's give it to God. Let's leave it with God. Let's embrace his peace. Let's accept his protection. And let's keep moving forward. And you know what? If we're really good, if we're really, really good, then we will encourage others who are not where we are spiritually and don't have the walk with God that we do and help relieve their anxieties and their minds in Christ Jesus. May God richly bless you all the days of your life, particularly this day. Encourage someone else. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Peace and safety. Bye-bye.